new apartments, ah, new life experiences. I turned 19, I'm gonna count that as a life experience. And a new video style. Um, I wanna try out this thing where at the end of every video, I ask for a comment and video responses, and then I make a separate video where I respond to all of those. So stay tuned for how you can get involved in that. I am non-binary, meaning I am neither entirely male nor entirely female, and I experienced gender dysphoria, which is a feeling of discomfort caused by my gender identity being different from the gender I was assigned at birth. A trans guy I knew in high school used a metaphor to describe dysphoria, that it feels similar to wearing a really uncomfortable, ill-fitting outfit and being stuck in that outfit. I was feeling particularly dysphoric when he explained this metaphor to me, so I objected to how mild it made dysphoria seem. I think overall it is a pretty good metaphor that gives a good like understanding of dysphoria to people who have never experienced it. Uh, with, with one addition, I think the uncomfortable outfit of dysphoria is more like a uniform uh, for a job that's not yours, although everyone treats you like it is your job because you're wearing that uniform. That's social dysphoria. The cool thing about young me not entirely relating to one trans person's metaphor for dysphoria is that it gives me a good opportunity to mention that not every trans person's experiences with dysphoria are the same, and the experiences I talk about in this video are only my experiences, although some people may be able to relate to, to them, they're, they're my experiences. Here are a few things that make me dysphoric. My lack of a dick, occasionally, fairly often makes me feel dysphoric. My curves, my height and small appendages. My voice, although that one's getting better. And being called by my dead name or wrong pronouns. Dysphoria is really tricky, and for a lot of people, there's no real way to make it completely go away. But I have a few ways of dealing with my dysphoria, including packing, which is when I stick a prosthetic penis in my underpants, which I would show you if I hadn't forgotten my dick at my parents' house a hundred thousand miles away. I've been taking testosterone for over seven months to help alleviate dysphoria. It might sound silly, but I have a particular pair of favorite undies that even if I just wear these under feminine clothing, um, they, they really help me feel less dysphoric and I like these. And I think generally like underwear is a subtle change that you can make in your expression if you are living in a space where you can't play around with your expression a whole lot. It's a subtle thing that very few people will notice unless they look at your laundry that you can play around with and maybe feel a little bit more affirmed. So 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> Another thing I do occasionally, but not often, is bind my chest, usually to alleviate social dysphoria and not because I have a whole lot of body dysphoria around my chest. However, binding does give me gender euphoria, and speaking of which, integral to understanding my experiences as a trans person is also understanding gender euphoria. Gender euphoria is a feeling of, HA YES! I get when I see myself with a flat chest, or when someone out in public calls me sir, or when T makes my voice drop to my f***ing clit. I feel like there's a lot of confusion about non-binary dysphoria because they're seemingly not as clear of a solution to our dysphoria. If the solution to binary trans people's dysphoria is to be affirmed as the binary gender they identify as. I understand where this confusion comes from, but I also want to divulge some ways that I could personally feel affirmed as non-binary to try and demonstrate where my experiences with dysphoria come from. I think of my dysphoria as a balancing act between the traditionally masculine and the traditionally feminine. Because it's hard, if not completely impossible, to solely express myself in gender neutral ways, considering how most things are traditionally gendered. I feel most neutral and affirmed when I can express myself evenly in masculine ways and in feminine ways. Individual cases of being called she by strangers don't necessarily make me feel dysphoric, but thinking that I am universally read as female does. Even though I am not a man, 
man, it can be affirming for me to be read as male in public because it is a sign that I am not being universally read as female. Being universally read as a cis man would also not be my favorite thing because I would ideally be able to be read as any and all genders by different people. Androgyny is a weird thing to quantify and strive for because even if you are really androgynous and make a lot of people question what gender you are, there will still be people who read you as a gender. I most often see androgyny expressed as masculine attire on a traditionally feminine body or feminine attire on a traditionally masculine body. Part of the reason why physically transitioning with hormones feels affirming to me is because I really like playing around with feminine expression. I think I've been seen as androgynous when I was pretty and dressed really masculinely, but masculine expression just doesn't feel right for me. I think having a body that was more often perceived as male and being able to play around with femininity without being overtly gendered as female would feel really great. At the same time, I don't hate all the feminine aspects of my body. People have argued that I won't like being on tea because it won't make me androgynous, it'll just make me masculine. It might make me be read as male more often than I'm read as female, which I think I could live with. Still, T won't get rid of all of the feminine aspects of my body. I look forward to hopefully being able to find spaces where I can safely sport a beard with a midriff bearing top. Um, I recognize that's a fairly socially unacceptable combination of body parts, but I think it'd be really affirming for me to be able to achieve that. If you have any thoughts relating to this video, leave a comment down below or email me a video response to the email on screen and in the description to possibly be included in a future video where I respond to y'all's thoughts. I want to try and encourage this conversation away from debating the validity of my transness my dysphoria, or my choice to physically transition, and instead talk about your experiences if you think you relate to or can't relate to what it's like for me to have dysphoria, or how you think it's maybe different for a non-binary person to experience dysphoria from a binary trans person. Cool. Thanks for watching. Peace! Something I also do occasionally, but not often, is bind my titties to my chest. <laughs> titties. 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 Titties.